"'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Except when this video goes out, it's not the night before Christmas, it's the 23rd of December, which historically would be the last day of Saturnalia. And trust me, absolutely no one was quiet during Saturnalia. Unless you was uh, cracking on with a neighbour's daughter. Today we're talking about the ancient Roman winter festival where children could be kings and slaves could tell their masters what they thought of them. I owe Saturnalia. <laughs> Okay, so I don't as of yet have a sponsor, so if you'd like to support me, please like, subscribe, share, and tap that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload, although you have to set it to all notifications because YouTube. <laughs> if you'd like to support me further, you can get access to all of my videos 48 hours early on my Patreon. You can also buy my book on Amazon, and you can get some fantastic merch on my merch store. Awful puns aside, links to all of those in the description, and before I make any more awful puns, Let's get on with the video. I'm gonna start off by saying that Saturnalia was around during the early days of the Roman Republic and didn't really stop until Christmas came along. This means that the ways that the festival was celebrated changed greatly as people took away and added in new traditions to the holiday. Saturnalia originated from more archaic rituals linking to agriculture, marking the last harvest and getting ready for next spring. We see festivals like this all across the world, so it's likely that Saturnalia had links to early Indo-European celebrations. The earliest forms of Saturnalia were an adaption of an ancient Greek midsummer festival called Cronia. This festival honoured Kronos, the ancient Greek counterpart to the Roman god Saturnus, to whom Saturnalia was dedicated, although Kronos was worshipped more by the pre-Hellenic population of Greece. Saturnus himself may actually link back to earlier, more indigenous Italian deities, being seen as a primordial god who taught humanity about agriculture. He was also the god of generations, dissolution and liberation. Saturnus ruled over the seasons and the passage of time, and allegedly ruled over Italy during a golden age, where all people were equal, and the gods lived amongst humanity. I can hear Eric von Daniken creaming himself as we speak. There are some mythological sources that say in the earliest days of the festival, Saturnus required a human sacrifice. If this ever did happen, it had already faded into the annals of history by the time the holiday was celebrated by the Romans. However, effigies or oscilia were sometimes given in order to symbolise the head of a sacrificed victim. There are some records from the 3rd century CE that the bodies of gladiators who evidently hadn't fared too well in the Colosseum would sometimes be used as a sacrifice. However, during my research, I only really came across this once, so take the bodies of gladiators who had passed on as sacrifices to Saturnus with a pinch of salt. Now, the Roman historian Livy claims the festival began around the 5th century BCE, although we do have some evidence to suggest it began even earlier. During the 5th century CE, the Roman scholar Macrobius used Saturnalia in a piece of work titled after the ancient Roman festival. He used the ancient holiday as a setting for his protagonists to express nostalgia for a time before Christianity had taken root in Rome. The focal point of the festival was in the northwest corner of the Forum in Rome. Here stood the Temple of Saturnus. Originally, the spot held the first shrines of the god called the Aris Eterni, but these were eventually replaced by the full-on temple in 497 BCE. The temple would also house the public treasury or the Aurarium during the time of the Roman Republic. However, this role became more limited as the Roman Republic gave way to the Roman Empire. Saturnalia as we know it today originally began as three separate holidays, with the day of Saturnus being celebrated on the 17th of December. Later, this date was given over to a feast day called Apalia. This celebration instead honoured Saturnus's sister wife Ops or Opis, the goddess of abundance and fruits of the earth. According to Macrobius, their respective holidays representing heaven, Saturnus, and earth, Ops, would eventually be combined. Opalia would be moved to the 19th of December, becoming the third day of Saturnalia. This day was still an honour even though it became a part of the larger celebrations, and on top of this, Ops had another celebration directly at the end of harvest season. The shortest day or winter solstice on the 21st or 22nd of December was also included in the celebrations and was called Bruma or Brumalia. 
Eventually these holidays merged into one seven day long festival of merrymaking. Basically everyone went out and got absolutely bladdered, ate as much food as they could, and then said they were honouring the gods. During the time of the Roman Republic, this ran on from the 17th of December to the 23rd of December, however all of this changed when Augustus took power and shortened the holiday to just three days. Caligula decided to bring it back up to five days, although this didn't matter, as by the time of Macrobius, the festival practically lasted two weeks. <laughs> Essentially everyone downed their glass of wine, turned round to the Roman Emperor and told him to go for 2 himself. <laughs> Saturnalia was all about celebration and letting go of the stresses of day-to-day -day life. So to be extra nice, the Romans refrained from declaring war during the festivities. They also held no executions. Now obviously a celebration the size Saturnalia became required a lot of planning. This fell to the adults, an elected office responsible for the maintenance of public buildings and the regulation of public festivals. They would oversee the hiring of labourers and planning out the actual celebrations, all while making sure that the city of Rome was able to cope with the influx of people coming in from the Roman countryside. Many farmers and other people would stay in the city for the duration of Saturnalia, quickly filling friends' homes, inns and taverns. On the first day of Saturnalia, people would line in the streets, much as we would for a Christmas parade today. This was to see the procession of the Senate and priests, followed by a series of bulls that were to be sacrificed to Saturnus. The procession would make its way up into the temple and the festivities would truly begin. Some other animals such as pigs may have also been sacrificed and these sacrifices would have been made to Saturnus by a bareheaded priest. This broke the normal social convention of a hooded priest making the sacrifice, symbolising the reversal of normality much like the rest of the festival. The centre of attention during the ancient Roman holiday was of course the cult statue of Saturnus. The feet of the ancient deity were freed from woolen bonds that kept them tied up every other day of the year. This symbolised a reversal of, or in most cases ignorance, of what would normally be strict Roman social customs. This was literally a week where everyone could pretty much do what they wanted. It was, it was basically libertarian Christmas. <laughs> Now allegedly the statue of Saturnus was actually hollow and filled with olive oil, for some reason. Once all the sacrificing had been done, everyone moved to the Forum for a massive feast. Emperor Domination was the one to make the holiday a public banquet, although private feasting still occurred. The idea behind this was probably to maintain a greater control of the festivities. Once everyone had sat down, a second smaller statue of Saturnus made of wood would be brought into the forum where the deity would watch over the Saturnalia feast. At some point or an alternative celebrations, the secondary statue of Saturnus may have been a model that was wrapped in wool. This was then unwrapped and placed on a seat, again watching over the feasting. Both of these traditions would have been so that Saturnus could be involved in the celebrations. Now luckily for the people of Rome, the Adels would foot the bill and organise with local bakers and cooks to organise this giant feast. Once everyone had finished eating, people would begin to exclaim, Io Saturnalia. The poet Statius in his poem Silvae would describe the lavish banquet and entertainments that Domitation presided over. These included sweets, fruits and nuts being showered over the crowd and flights of flamingos being released over Rome. Now because it's the Romans it had to get messed up somewhere and gladiatorial games would be played. These games featured buxom women, little people and other combinations of gladiatorial combatants that wouldn't normally be seen. These battles were even illuminated so that they could be played late into the night, although some Romans did protest to these blood sports. Even Emperor Nero would get involved with the festivities by supplying a large number of free prostitutes for the week. Why? Because Nero. <laughs> Chariot races were also common and by the end of the 4th century CE there was possibly as many as 36 happening in a day. I don't even know if you'll notice but yes I am now, I am now recording on a different day. As the festivities kicked in people would decorate their homes with wreaths made from evergreen branches such as holly or fir and they'd even throw in some berries for good measure. They also shed their traditional togas in favour of more colourful clothing. Some of our modern Christmas decorations can at least partially trace their roots back to the decorations of Saturnalia. Now during the celebrations there'd be a king known as the Saturnalia Princeps or the leader of Saturnalia. This was known more colloquially as the Lord of Misrule or as we call it today, me bringing the third round of shots to the table. Each household could have their own Lord of Misrule who would be chosen from the lowest members of the household and then given permission to conduct 
light-hearted mischief. Now you couldn't, for example, have a statue built in your honour, but you could have your bully thrown into a river as a joke. Just a shame about the sharp rocks. Another modern Christmas tradition that some of us may be used to is the custom of hiding coins or other small objects inside cakes. And this can also be traced back to Saturnalia. In fact, it was another way of choosing the Lord of Misrule. At this most wonderful time of the year, people would give each other gifts, much like they do today. Although Roman social convention meant that you had to buy a present for everyone you knew, and the gift couldn't be cheaper than the one you bought them last year. Luckily for the Romans, gift cards were yet to be invented, because who wants a gift card? Seriously, just give me the money, because when am I ever going to spend £15 in shoe zone? It was also customary to visit your neighbour's house and give them a smaller gift, although if ancient Roman parents were anything like mine, they 100% sent their kids to do this. Now, the upending of well-established Roman social convention didn't just mean hedonistic partying, it also meant role reversal. In some cases, slaves were even served dinner by their masters, but this probably didn't happen all that often. In most cases, slaves were still expected to prepare the food, but could eat alongside their masters, and could even talk to them on equal footing, getting in a couple of gentle insults. Although given that after the celebrations things went back to normal, I can't imagine too many people letting rip about awful work conditions. Slaves were pretty much given the same freedoms as citizens were for a short period of time, meaning that they could gamble, they could get drunk in public, and they didn't have to wear the cloak of decorum that they had to wear for the rest of the year. I just imagine ancient Roman slaves waking up on Saturnalia to their masters going, Slave, for Saturnalia this year we've decided to treat you as a human being. Now, go on, run along. Have fun. Shoo. Go on. As a part of this role reversal, there were some cases where children would be treated as adults, and other cases where men and women would dress up as each other. Everyone would be able to gamble in public and play games, such as bobbing for corks and ice water, and, of course, everyone would be absolutely sloshed, although not everyone was out to get recce. The Roman author Aulus Gellius apparently played trivia games with his friends when he was a student. In some cases, the masters wore a palaeum, a felt hat that was normally worn by freed slaves to show their status in society. This was to show that on Saturnalia, everyone was free and everyone was equal, linking back to the earlier mythological origins of the festival. Now, I did see a couple of references that wearing Santa hats imitates this practice, but I never found any direct links, so... It's probably just coincidental. It's possible that this practice was only done in order to alleviate some of the social tensions that were built up over the course of the year, because, you know, enslaved people tend to get a little bit tense. Now, much like our society for Christmas in the modern day, Roman society would effectively stop for Saturnalia. This was so well ingrained that the ancient conspirator Catiline planned to murder the Senate and burn down the city during the ancient holiday. Luckily, Cicero would stop the plot in 63 CE, because imagine trying to stop a coup when the entire city is absolutely wankered. Much like we give friends, family and co-workers Christmas cards, the Romans had the practice of gifting verses. The climax of Saturnalia would come on the winter solstice, or on the 25th of December. As the celebrations come to an end, the wealthier members of society would give their dependents a small amount of money. With this cash, people would go to special markets called sigillaria to buy small terracotta figures called sigilla. These could depict gods and goddesses, mythological heroes, and if you had the money, you could even have them custom made to look like the gift receiver. Some of these figures would be made into comical renditions of the gift receiver as a sort of prank. Or, you know if you really want to rub the salt into the wound of the bully. <laughs> Just got out of the lake and uh, handed him his little terracotta gag gift. <laughs> Small wax candles called cray and clay faces known as sigillariae were also given as gifts. I am 100% certain I've mispronounced both of those, but I've tried enough times to get the line right, so we're moving on because I'm recording this at 3am. The candles served as a source of light and heat in the cold winter months, and again, were very similar to some of the decorations we have today. While we're talking about gifts, Emperor Augustus was apparently famed for his gag gifts, and whilst he tried to constrain the holiday, he apparently had a great love for it. Once the festival drew to a close, Saturn's feet would once again be bound, symbolising a return to reality. And the holiday was much loved, as the Roman poet Catullus would describe Saturnalia as the best of times. However, not everyone enjoyed the week-long up. 
There were a few Roman Scrooges, like the Stoic philosopher Seneca the Younger, who complained about the mob as it went out of control. Pliny the Younger also wrote in one of his letters that he was holed up in his study while the rest of his household got absolutely twatted. The poet Lucian of Samosata had the god Saturnus say in his poem called Saturnalia, During my week the serious is barred, no business allowed, drinking and being drunk, noise and games of dice, appointing of kings and feasting of slaves, singing naked, clapping, and the occasional ducking of corked faces in icy water. Such are the functions over which I preside. Saturnalia became incredibly popular throughout the Empire and was celebrated in various ways as time went on. Now, as I said in the last section, Saturnalia was practiced throughout the Empire and this popularity allowed it to last for as long as it did, but Christianity was on its way in and the fate of Saturnalia really hung in the balance. Now, as we're not celebrating Saturnalia in the 21st century, it's fairly obvious that the Christian celebration of Christmas won out. But as I've been hinting at, Saturnalia rather evolved into Christmas rather than was replaced by it. Emperor Constantine would make Rome Christian in 313 CE. Saturnalia, being a pagan holiday, looked set for the chopping block. But, as I've said, Saturnalia was a very fluid holiday that had already changed greatly throughout its history. Now, the Roman Empire was pretty much built on mixing beliefs, such as the worship of Sulis Minerva in Bath. This was a combination of the Roman goddess Minerva and the local goddess Sulis. The connection with the birth of Christ in midwinter wouldn't be made until the 2nd century CE, and eventually Christian scholars would settle on the 25th of December as his birthday. Although, this is not universal. Armenia celebrates Christmas on the 19th of January, and the Greek Orthodox Church celebrates it on the 6th of January. Some scholars place the birth of Christ in June or during the spring equinox. Basically, we're not 100% sure when he was born, and I can only imagine that infuriates the NSA and MI5. The first known celebration of Christmas took place in 354 CE, but Saturnalia was still celebrated. However, as time went on, the connection to Saturnus was slowly lost, and many of the traditions and practices faded over time. But a great deal would transition over. Now, as you can imagine, the early Christian authorities weren't exactly happy that these hedonistic pagan practices were still happened, so the people listened to the authorities and ignored them. Apparently, church authorities complained that even the people in Rome were still practicing these old pagan customs associated with Saturnalia as late as the 8th century CE. However, unlike the pagan Romans, Christians didn't really lend too much to birthdays at this time. The big day for them was Easter. Now, once the 25th of December was settled as the birthday of Christ, it didn't immediately lead to a Christian Saturnalia. In fact, to begin with, many observed the holy day somberly. You see, the 25th of December may have been picked due to another Roman festival taking place on that day. Dies is Natalis Solis Invicti, or the day of the birth of the unconquered sun. This was, unsurprisingly, a celebration of the birth of the sun, and was far more religious than the straight-up debauchery of Saturnalia. The festival of Dies Natalis Solis Invicti had its origins in ancient Syria, and the monotheistic cult of Mithras. The Sol Invicta cult would be introduced to the Empire in 274 CE by Emperor Aurelian, who pretty much made it a state religion, with its emblem being found on Roman coins. Now, now, Emperor Constantine, the first Christian emperor who made Rome Christian, grew up in the Sol Invicta cult, so this may have influenced the date. Now, allegedly, this is why the 25th of December was picked as the birthday of Christ to override this day and the pagan practices being practiced at the time. But we can't be 100% sure of the reasoning. Now, before the comments turn into an absolute hellscape, early Christians had good reasoning to not like pagan traditions. Probably because they spent a good chunk of time as lion food. Still, Saturnalia and Christmas share a good amount of similarities, from the decorations, to the gift-giving, to the spending time with family. Monday Christmas does feel an awful lot like Saturnalia. Including the drunken mob, but to be fair, that's been a Christmas tradition through 
most of history as well so <laughs> now i don't think that the christians came in like the grange to steal saturnalia there was definitely attempts to subdue pagan practices but i think that those practices just evolved with the populace over time what was tradition in saturnalia became tradition in christmas and christmas then evolved in itself even today our modern christmas is celebrated differently all over the world with visits from the Mary of the Wid in Wales, the Krampus in Central Europe, and of course, Japan. In all honesty, Saturnalia wasn't taken out by Christmas. More so, it became Christmas. As for Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's sus. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did I get anything wrong? Do you disagree with anything I said? What would you like to see next? Thank you all for watching. Oh, Saturnalia. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.